Beaujoli and his colleague Arnie Thompson argued that the launch was 20 degrees outside their operating experience and emphatically not worth the risk. I thought surely the photographs I have in my possession will certainly change this whole caucus. I placed those photographs down in front of the managers and I was told after the meeting by one of my colleagues that I was literally screaming at them to look at the photos and not ignore what they were telling us. It's very simple. The more black you see between the seals, the lower temperature launch, and the closer you come to a disaster. It's as simple as that. I couldn't get him to even look at the photographs. The general manager turned to his three senior managers and asked what they wanted to do. Two agreed to launch, but the third was undecided. So he turns to him and in no uncertain terms tells him, take off your engineering hat and put on your management hat. And that's exactly what happened. He changed hats and he changed his vote. Just 30 minutes prior, he's the one that gave the conclusions and recommendations charts at the main engineering meeting to not launch below 53 degrees Fahrenheit. When the teleconference resumed, Firekel stated their new position. They were now in favor of launching. NASA did not ask why they had changed their minds. That was stupid. That's what, uh, well, we should have asked him. I mean, that was dumb on our part. You know, they had, they had, we should have, we should have said, give us your rationale for changing them out. And what they did was, they presented the, the rationale for go. Kilminster did that. And, and, and he had a good rationale. I didn't agree with one single statement made on the chart by the managers. In fact, they made some statements that they couldn't possibly have the data to back up the statements because there was nobody closer to that joint than myself and Arnie Thompson. And both of us could not have made statements that those managers made on that chart. But NASA assumed the change of mind was unanimous. If a guy sits in a meeting, which is a go for launch meeting, and he doesn't stand up in front of the train to stop it, he's go. And nobody stood up. So everybody was go for launch. With the contractor's new launch recommendation in their hands, NASA managers were not required to report the night's events up the chain of command. The O-ring issue was considered closed. It was 11.15 p.m., 10 hours to launch, and everyone left as quickly as possible. And, and I remember going home telling my wife that, uh, boy, I sure hope we made the right decision. And uh, I, had, I, had a lot of, I had a lot of misgivings about it. When I left the room that night, I felt very, very badly defeated. Uh, upon reaching home, when I opened up my front door and walked into the house, I didn't say a word to my wife. And she asked me, what's wrong? And I said, oh, nothing, honey. It was a great day. We just had a meeting. They're going to launch tomorrow and kill the astronauts, but outside of that, it was a great day. When launch director Gene Thomas arrived for duty, he had no idea about the fierce argument over the O-rings. Besides, the falling temperatures were causing him other problems. The biggest that was reported was the icicles on the pad. We had left the water some of the hoses running over, overnight so our water systems wouldn't freeze. And during the evening, the winds came up, tremendously high winds, and blew some of those hoses loose, and we created quite a few icicles at the pad. And that was probably, in my opinion, the major problem that was brought to my attention. Blast off might dislodge sheets of ice, which could pierce the shuttle's protective heat tiles. An ice inspection team was dispatched to report. We came around the corner, got a full face of north wind, which probably dropped the temperature another 20 degrees. And before they even really looked at the vehicle, we saw all this ice, icicles hanging from everywhere, from the railings, the large pipes, the deck, the air conditioning ducts, just everywhere. Every square inch was covered with an icicle. And if any of them broke loose, you'd have a spear coming straight down. So we're walking along, working our checklists, and, and, and one eye on these icicles the whole time we're doing it. As daylight spread across the Cape, it seemed that the big freeze was about to stop the launch after all. But NASA was still keen to go. 
basically we asked the contractor to give us a map of where those icicles would be of danger if they were in a certain area. And they came back to us and said, we do not feel like we should have icicles in a certain perimeter around the structure. And uh, we sent people there, again with broom handles and, and everything to knock those icicles down and get them out of the way. As the crew made their way out for their third launch attempt, they knew about the ice problem, but not the O-ring debate. OTC, CDR, are you checked? CDR, OTC, I read you loud and clear. How many? Clear, good one, clear. Good morning, Dan, let's hope we go today. Hey, you, would like to do that? OTC, MS-3, are you checked? MS-3 is OTC on airbound one, I copy you loud and clear. How many? Read you loud and clear. Good morning, Ron. Read you loud and clear. Good morning, Allison. TLC, no. this OTC, uh, I copy you. Bye-bye, how many? Okay, guys, we're on clear. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. We're ready today. Totally. TLT, OTC, perform AP pre-start. When, when the crew gets on board, um, I try and put them at ease. Um, you know, you say hello, good afternoon, um, you know, let's hope, hope, let's hope we fly today, that kind of thing. Um, Little things, you know, nothing, nothing to take their attention away from their mission, but try and put them at ease, yes. OTC, TF1. TF1, this is OTC. I read you loud and clear, how many? Loud clear. Good morning, Krista. Hope we go today. Good morning, hope so too. As the families arrived, the temperature was still below freezing, some 20 degrees colder than Thiokol's original O-ring recommendation. But with so many delays, everyone was keen to launch. You never let the safety of the crew or the vehicle uh, be compromised by the need to launch. But psychologically, you want it to go. Just like everybody that watches the launch wants it to go. We had been through three or four launch scrubs. There was an atmosphere here, certainly, that we needed to get this vehicle off the ground. Rain safe. Go for launch. At T-minus nine minutes, Gene Thomas conducted his final poll. At 11.29 a.m., he reported that all systems were go for launch. No one had mentioned any concerns about the O-rings. We uh, hope the crew a good mission. Our best with you. Thanks for the good show. At Concord High School, Krista's students assembled to watch liftoff. We all had noisemakers. I will never forget that. We were so excited. We had noisemakers. This room was completely packed. There wasn't an empty seat. And we were so excited to think that this was it. It was finally going to take off today. As NASA continued the countdown, across Florida, thousands of people stopped to watch history being made. In the grandstands were friends and relations from all corners of America. Grace and Ed Corrigan stood waiting, surrounded by their family. Barbara Morgan watched from the roof of the press building. And millions across the country tuned in on TV. It's very cold out here. The temperature at the launch pad, 25 degrees right now. And you can see Challenger, she's sitting there ready to go. In Utah, Thiokol had a room set up where employees could watch the launch. Bob Ebeling saw me walk past, and he came flying out of the room, took hold of my arm, and asked me if I would come in and watch the launch. And at first I told Bob, no, I didn't want to see the launch. I just did not want to see the failure. And he, he basically talked with me for a while and convinced me to come in, just come on in and watch. With two minutes to launch, all systems were go.